What's going on, everybody? This is DK Dynamite, and tonight we're going to be talking about all the content that we know is coming to Season 3 Reloaded of Modern Warfare 3 in Warzone. Definitely stay tuned. But before we jump into that, be sure to hit that subscribe button down below, drop a like, and as a quick FYI, there is a double XP event happening this upcoming weekend. It should be kicking off a good 24 hours early on PlayStation this Thursday. It'll be exclusive for around a day, and then beginning on Friday the 19th, that should be extended to all other platforms until the 21st. So, there's been quite a few XP events happening over the last couple of weeks. They ended Season 2 two with one, open season three with one, and then did a bonus, I think, 24-hour XP event last week to make up for some server outages, and we're getting another one this weekend. So people out there are certainly going to be burning through all the levels for our third season, whether it's for their player, weapon, or their battle pass progression. But as a big reminder, there is plenty of brand new article coverage going up over on Detonated.com. For those that want to read up a little bit more on multiplayer, Warzone and Zombies, Black Ops 2024, Warzone Mobile, plus we got plenty of tweets every single hour on Detonated's Twitter. Now, beginning with the marketing for our mid-season 3 update, this is what the schedule should look like. So typically, we end up getting a full reveal of a new season or mid-season a good week before the content goes live, so a Wednesday before the Wednesday. But Reloaded updates have been marketed a bit weird with MW2 and 3, where sometimes we'll end up getting a reveal for Reloaded on Thursday or Friday instead of the Wednesday, and sometimes even as late as Monday, two days before the start of the mid-season update. So for all we know, anywhere from April 24th to the 26th could be the blog post for Reloaded, or they could do it as late as Monday the 29th, just two days before May 1st, which is the supposed start of our mid-season 3 updates, according to the in-game Battle Pass timer. The in-game timer does reflect when the classified sector does open up, and those always open with the release of a Reloaded update. But we should be getting a gameplay trailer, likely for zombies, above anything else when it comes to Season 3 Reloaded, and on top of that, the patch shouldn't be any more than like 10-ish gigabytes. That's the average size of a mid-season update, but it all depends on how much they want to add in that's setting us up for Season 4, and even beyond that. But we should never be seeing a patch bigger than the start of a season by any means. Now, tonight's video is sponsored by LagoFast. If you're looking to get more kills and better lobbies, connect faster, and boost frames a second, then look no further than LagoFast. LagoFast works on all platforms and supports all Call of Duty titles. Players can already jump into bot lobbies in Modern Warfare 3, all while reducing their ping and boosting their FPS. The LagoFast app is mainly for PC gamers to solve high ping issues, but for players on console, the LagoFast box does have you covered. The LagoFast box plugs directly into your console, and then you boot up the LagoFast app on your phone to connect your console to the best server possible. But you can get 30% off your order when using my discount code that you can see on screen. And be sure to check out the special link down below in this video's description or the pinned comment. And thank you to LagoFast for sponsoring tonight's video. Now, when it comes to multiplayer, we actually have two more 6v6 maps on the way, which I'm really looking forward to. The first one is called Checkpoint. It's a repurposed section of Rebirth Island, but for multiplayer. It's the first time we're seeing a section of Rebirth put into the game's multiplayer. Obviously, we saw with Vondel last year. I actually forgot about this in a recent video, but we did see a section of Vondel added into multiplayer. Two sections, I believe. And they also went ahead and added a third section into what is called Tanked for MW3 MP. But it would be cool at some point if they ever add in like a Ground War experience taken from Vondel or Rebirth. Rebirth. So we have Checkpoint coming to multiplayer on top of a map called Grime, which is actually a section from the UK that we saw in Campaign. It's going to be what you can consider another repurposed section from single player, but will likely play very differently in multiplayer than it did over in the Campaign. On top of that, we also have two new game modes to expect for multiplayer. One is called Minefield, which sounds like absolute chaos. Every time an enemy dies in this mode, a mine will drop where their body was, and these mines cannot be picked up and will always detonate when an enemy walks past them. So it's going to be... As as the game will suggest, a minefield, and it's probably going to be one of the most chaotic modes ever seen in multiplayer. Can't imagine how crazy it's going to be to try to go on a streak when there's mines blowing up all over the place, but there's another mode called Escort, kind of similar to Payload from Warzone that we saw, and also similar to the section of the war map we have that got added in MW3, where one team has to escort a maw from one point to another. There's limited respawns and two separate rounds. So once you go ahead and finish with the maw, whether it means the timer expired or you escorted it successfully to the other side, the rounds will switch and there'll be another team that's trying to escort that maw to a certain objective. But then when it comes to events and even cosmetics, we know from the blog post there is going to be a COD endowment event of some sort to celebrate Military Appreciation Month. It's unclear if that's going to be an XP focused event. Is it one with actual challenges? There'll likely be a brand new COD endowment bundle dropped with that event though and maybe you even get an XP boost for running that operator skin or something. But there's apparently a collaboration with the NBA coming around. So there was one last year from Modern Warfare 2 with Kevin Durant. There's apparently another one releasing 
being around season three reloaded that is going to feature Devin Booker. Devin Booker was actually featured in the lobby, which is the live action trailer for Modern Warfare 3. And he was there alongside some other celebrities and other characters that also got added to this game over the post launch. So I think it makes sense that they kind of set up a Devin Booker collab ever since the launch window of this game. It's unclear what will happen during this collaboration. Will it just be a bundle or will it be an actual in-game challenge event dealing with some XP milestones or actual challenges? That's unknown, but there's other bundles like this robot looking skin. It's unclear when this is going to come out or how, but there's also a potential blue monster collaboration. There's a blue monster skin called Low Profile, and there's even some other blue monster themed cosmetics that should be coming into the game. I covered these a bit in a previous video, but we even have the 141 winter outfits that we saw in the campaign. Those should also be added into the game via bundles or an event of some sort, possibly a bundle collection. They were seen in the season three cinematic cutscenes, so that was obviously a big advertisement for all the skins this season. So we'll also be seeing those at some point during the second half of season three. Now, sadly, there's only one DLC weapon coming during Reloaded. That is the Bell 27 assault rifle, right? Weapon that we saw in Advanced Warfare 2014. There could be some other surprise weapons we don't know about yet, but this should be the weapon featured in the classified sector. So that'll mean you go into the classified sector and there'll be four challenges you have to do that also reward you with various rewards, whether it's XP bonuses, whether it's an aftermarket part, probably not likely this season, but there'll be some rewards you can get by doing the four challenges. Then you unlock the HVT, a fifth challenge you have to do that unlocks the DLC weapon, which is the bow. But you do have to complete all five challenges in the classified sector to get the brand new range assault rifle. Now, there are gameplay snippets out there of the Bell 27 from the season three gameplay trailer. I know some leakers, I think, force loaded it into their game. And there's even an image of what the new model does look like. Now, during the season three creator call, the developers actually showed us creators some footage of the model 1887s back in action, right? Although we're only getting one DLC weapon with the classified sector, there are still several aftermarket parts to look forward to. We do have what are called the Wardens, right? This is an amp for the Lockwood, and it'll give you dual wield model 1887s. These are going to be absolutely insane. Apart from these, we're also going to be seeing the Jack Patriot, which turns the M16 into a fully auto rifle. That should be exciting because we saw a version of this in the Cold War campaign, but never really in multiplayer. I know it's similar to the M4, but you know what I mean. We also have the Jack Atlas for the AMR9. We actually saw this exact same AMR9 build in Advanced Warfare, so definitely an Atlas themed season here when it comes to weaponry. And we also have the Jack Cutthroat, which is going to be a stock. And we also have what is likely going to be a blueprint unlock or something else you could get by doing a set of weekly challenges. And by the time you get that done, you'll be at week number eight, which is going to reward you with this animated camo. So we still have a good two more amps to look forward to before the start of Reloaded. One is going to be a stock called the Jack Cutthroat, and the other one is going to be the Jack Revenger for the BP-50. Moving into Warzone now, there's actually quite a bit left for Season 3 Reloaded, right? So much released with the launch of the season, Rebirth Island, a bunch of quality of life improvements, and we of course have had a couple of different in-game events, but we're going to be looking at variable time of day updates for Rebirth. To my understanding, on the Crater Call, it was made clear to us by Binox that the variable time of days are only going to be incorporated with Rebirth Lockdown. That's an LTM also coming to the map at some point closer to Reloaded. That's of course an LTM that we saw on Vondel last year, and it's still a mode that comes around every now and again. I actually really like the mode quite a bit, but I do believe if there is a lot of good reception around the variable time of day, they'll also incorporate those into Resurgence. We're also going to be seeing an LTM called Rebirth Loaded. This is essentially a watered down version of Plunder where you spawn in with your loadouts and every time you die, it'll give you another loadout that is also something you've probably put together and it's still with the Resurgence rules though, just kind of a plunder without the actual objective. So that's pretty cool. We also have Infill Strikes, which will actually change points of interest here on the map itself. On Rebirth Island, you can see the Water Tower or the Clock Tower get destroyed. You can see a hole get made in the roof, which will create new opportunities with vehicles. You could kind of bring them up a ramp onto the roof itself. It's going to be crazy, but yeah, these are again going to be very rare in-game events that won't occur in every single match, but when they do occur, they will definitely change the pacing of that gameplay quite a bit, and if they get well received, they'll probably be incorporated much more frequently throughout the course of Rebirth's life cycle. Now, there's also the heavy armor in-game event, which I believe will only happen during infill. If the public event is activated, as it says in the blog, it allows you some added protection, enabling the equipping of an additional armor plate for the duration of the match. The extra plate slot is visible above your health bar, where play information is normally seen. I'll put details on screen so you guys can see how this affects tempered, how this affects people that don't have as many plates. It's a pretty interesting in-game event that might end up upsetting people considering it's going to really change up how much health another player does have. It's really going to shake things up quite a bit, but again, if things don't get too well received, they just won't bring it back in the following season, right? It's been really cool to see very open communication from Raven, from Beanox, and all studios involved with the MW3 life cycle. We also have the utility box equipment. That's a fuel upgrade coming out. That's going to be a merge with an ammo box and an armor
armor box that's being added in. There's going to be a foresight kill streak, which we saw in Warzone 1, but now it's going to be a really random and rare kill streak you can find, showing you all future gas circles. The specialist perk package is being added in, allowing you to hold all 29 perks at once, which is wild. We then have the weapon trade station we saw during Rebirth Reinforces era. That was for Vanguard's life cycle. Really cool if you want to just trade in some bunk loot you guys find for something like a gas mask or for a self revive, a kill streak. That's going to be awesome to see. And we also have the opening of different Urzikstan bunkers. It's unclear what that's teasing. There's rumors that there's going to be a Black Ops reveal event in early June. So maybe this will be something a part of that or something else entirely. It's just unknown. But yeah, we're going to be seeing the one update to the big map, which is the Urzikstan bunkers with Reloaded. We obviously had a new Gulag ad at the start of the season, but that probably doesn't really count in terms of new content. But wrapping things up here with zombies, right? We're going to be seeing a brand new Act 4 mission taking you to the Zarqua Hydroelectric area of Almazra. It's our new Dark Ether Rift, right? So once you do the Act mission, there'll be some hints provided to you guys as to what the relics are that you have to find. You're going to go ahead and find those relics. You have to cleanse them or do a quest of some sort on Urzikstan. And once you do that, you'll be allowed to re-enter that rift outside of the Act mission, but for a similar rift experience that we saw in Seasons 1 and 2, you got to do some contracts to get your hands on an Elder Sigil, unless you already have them, and then you can go into the hardcore version of this new hydroelectric rift, where you can go ahead and do some contracts again, but harder this time, and you'll be able to unlock the brand new schematics. Deadwire Detonators, the Golden Mask Filter, and even the Sergeant's Beret, which is kind of like the DMZ Disguise. On top of that, there'll be a new Rainmaker Warlord over in Urzikstan, specifically near the Shahin Manor area of the map, and we'll probably end up seeing the introduction of the Wallet System, which has been done for quite a while. It's been leaked out for several months. Seems like it's a feature that's going to get added in pretty quietly, like the containment levels were back during Season too. But that is about it. This has been DK Dynamite. Leave our thoughts down below in the comment section. What are your thoughts on this big news roundup for Season 3 Reloaded? We should be seeing marketing in around a week from now. Season 3 is off to an absolute banger start. It's one of the best content drops in a long time. I think Season 2 also was on par with this, but there's quite a bit to look forward to on all fronts when it comes to multiplayer wars and zombies. Let me know what you're looking forward to the most. Really hope you've enjoyed, and peace out, everybody.